on the same page. In the note of a more exciting GPU launch, we have September rolling up here quickly and the GeForce RTX 40 series Ada Lovelace GPUs are rumored to launch uh, this year. So what's insane is it could feature a blazing 850 watt TDP. Now we talked about this because we do know that the, the power supplies are now starting to come with a single 12 pin revisions of the new power adapters for PCIe. And it's gonna be really hard to build essentially mining rigs with these particular setups. But ready your PC and especially the PSUs because NVIDIA's next-gen GeForce RTX 40 Ada Lovelace GPUs are rumored to consume almost a kilowatt of power. There have been multiple reports that NVIDIA next-gen GeForce RTX 40 GPUs based on Ada Lovelace graphics card architecture are going to be insanely fast and insanely power hungry. Now the latest rumors coming from Grey Moon seem to point out the flagship GPU, the AD102, could consume over 800 watts of power. According to the latest information, Grey Moon 55 mentions that GeForce RTX 48 Lovelace GPUs could be available as early as September of 2022. But the launch isn't the most interesting part that is mentioned in the rumor, but the alleged power figures. Both leakers state the flagship AD102 GPU will have multiple SKUs for the RTX 4080, RTX 4080 Ti, and RTX 4090 desktop graphics cards. It looks like these GPUs will also feature different power targets with the entry-level GPU hitting 450 watts of peak power consumption, followed by the TI variant around 600 watts, while the flagship RTX 4090 could end up with a monstrous TDP of around 850 watts. Both leakers do state that these aren't based on the final specifications and the power figures could change in the retail variants, but there's a good reason to believe why these could end up being true. NVIDIA is already investing development around the new PCI Gen 5 connector that offers up to 600 watts of power input per connector. The delayed GeForce RTX 3090 Ti is one example where the card is expected to rock at a TGP of 450 watts and will be the first desktop graphics card to utilize such a connector interface. The next gen cards are also expected to utilize the same PCIe standard, but it looks like the top variant could end up with two gen five connectors to supplement the 800 watts of power requirement. It's also important to note on these power requirements that if you're looking at the ASUS uh, power supply that we looked at with their specifications versus the MSI, there's some specific power design differences that are going into that single plug. Meaning that at this time, from what I saw on the ASUS side, they're only hitting 450 watts through that PCIe 5 power connector, while the MSI has the full blown uh, 600 watts. So if you're going high end on these particular GPUs, you're also going to have to be very careful on the fact that just because it has that connector doesn't necessarily mean it will support the 30 or the 4090. And that's going to be extra, extra sketchy for everybody trying to build mining rigs, especially. And I don't even know if these are going to be something that you want to mine with. Several PSU makers have already started releasing their brand new Gen 5 power supplies, which would include necessary connectors to support the next gen GPUs, but they only feature one primary Gen 5 connector, which means that if Nvidia was to use a second 16 pin port, users will have to use a 2x8 pin to 1 to 16 pin adapter, which will ship with most of these PSUs. Oh, it's going to be a mess. Of course, these are all rumors for now, but both leakers have very high credibility based on their previous rumors and leaks, so this might end up being true. Considering that NVIDIA is aiming for a huge two times performance gain with their Ada Lovelace GeForce RTX 40 series lineup to compete against AMD's RDNA 3 offerings, the green team could be going all out, and that includes power and pricing besides just performance. Now, it is important to note also that from the perspective of somebody that's been in the GPU kind of scene for a long time now at this point, uh, even making videos for over 10 years now on specifically just hardware, computer, PC hardware, 
one of the correlations that you need to pay attention to is that usually when a any given company is starting to push out as much power as possible out of their current architectures, it means they are falling behind. Now, in the past, what we have seen, of course, is this from the AMD side after purchasing ATI and running out of the ATI roadmap and figuring out that they didn't really have the, the power to compete with NVIDIA and essentially just making really hot, really power hungry GPUs to compete for as long as they could before they finally revamped their architecture. And then it took a long time for that architecture to catch back up to AMD. Here recently it has. To me, this sounds like Nvidia is definitely a little scared at AMD's RDNA 3. And that's because also, if you look at the path, hold on, if you look at the path that AMD is taking with the latest generation with RDNA 2, uh, they have focused primarily on reducing the amount of power that their GPUs are taking, uh, but at the same time, while at the same time increasing their performance. So they have much better power to performance figures. If you look at straight up traditional rasterization on the 6900 XT versus the 3090, the 6900 XT is uh, outperforming by 10 to 15% in traditional rasterization. While Nvidia is trying to use software tricks and adding more power to the GPUs to catch up, even to the point to where I believe the 3090 Ti is hopefully for them going to dethrone the 6900 XT on traditional rasterization, but is going to have that high 600 watt TDP. So that's kind of like how these cycles go in the competition for the GPU race. Previously, oop, it, previously rumored specs have shown as a, a huge update to the core specs. The NVIDIA AD102 ADA GPU appears to have 18,432 CUDA cores based on the preliminary specs, which can change provided by Copi. This is also almost twice the cores present in the amp here, which was already a massive step up from Turing. A 2.2 gigahertz clock speed would give us 81 teraflops of compute performance, FP32. This is more than twice the performance of the existing RTX 3090, which packs 36 teraflops of F FP32 compute power. So here you go. Uh, this is rumored performance estimates. They are rumoring RDNA 3 above 8102 here. And the specification differences. Now, da, 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 GDDR6X with the 384-bit bus. Now, if this is true, uh, the only thing that's going to increase the mining performance is going to not be the bus width, right? And not be the memory type, but the memory speed at which they're uh, saying they're going to get GDDR6X up to which could get up to that 19 or that 21 gigabits per second. Whereas right now you're really stuck at that 19 gigabits per second. That's really the only memory performance gain that you're going to get for mining. And I don't think that's enough to actually make the amount of power consumption increase really worth it. I'm genuinely not expecting much from the mining uh, community or for the mining community from this release. personally. So that's kind of how I think about it. I'd like to hear your thoughts in the comment section and of course the live chat when I get through to reading it. I hope you enjoyed this clip from the Crypto Mining Morning Show every Monday through Friday, 7.45 a.m. Pacific and 10.45 a.m. Eastern Time. You can check out more clips here or if you're interested in checking out the entire live show, you can check that out down here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Tuesday.